Hey everybody, Zio here. I hope you guys had a great holiday weekend, a Merry Christmas, or whatever holidays you celebrate, and I hope you got some good stuff. Personally, I just wanted to thank you guys for the support you've given me this year, and I'm looking forward to what 2022 brings. I am honestly so close to 200 subscribers right now that I have no idea how to process this. I'm, I'm pretty excited. Uh, just because I never thought I would make it this far. But hey, you know, just wanted to go ahead and extend that thanks. And yeah, I don't have an opening bit for this video. Okay, I lied. Here's the opening bit. Oh, you know, smile. <laughs> Okay, so I initially thought that we were going to get proper closure in this episode. Instead, we got essentially an epilogue to the previous arc, along with some quick character deaths, a plot line that I thought would flesh out a specific character. Hell, the majority of you guys in the comments thought it would flesh out a specific character. And more mysteries to unravel. So, it's that time again. We're going to talk Revice, episode 16. The dead men are indeed split. After the destruction of their home base, Aguilera and Julio barely escape capture from Phoenix, with Aguilera finally taking on her dead man form. It's kind of cute. I wouldn't mind getting beat up by that. It's not exactly what I was hoping for, but, you know, it's fine. And the Queen Bee motif is pretty suited for her, but I would have expected something a little bit more... I don't know, like a flamingo? Ortega and the Chameleon, however, head out on their own, and that leaves us now with three separate factions. The Dead Men's are split into two, and then there is, of course, Phoenix. Julio and Aguilera set up base in the abandoned warehouse we keep seeing in so many Toku fights. While Ortega and Chameleon set up their base on top of a rooftop, and they set up their next plan of attack. Here we actually get a little bit of exposition where Chameleon talks about how he hated himself and his appearance, and is willing to help out Ortega dominate the world. They're really hyping up Chameleon. I really hope that he sticks around with all this character development. Right? So a lot of the large focal points for this episode is really planting the seeds for the next arc. Hiromi finally plays a major part in the story for this episode. That's nice. As his dead man Itis keeps doing him in, he attempts to transform in the beginning to take on Chameleon, but fails to do so. He makes the rounds in this episode as the Igarashi family, namely Sakura, have to deal with their mother. Mostly because, thinking that the dead man base is now destroyed, they no longer have to risk their lives. This is where the savior of the story for this episode, Hiromi, chimes in to defend the siblings for being necessary for the war against the dead men. At Phoenix, it appears that George is now in possession of Gifu, and has been studying his biology, or rather, lack thereof. Because, although he's made of solid stone, there appears to be a sound that he makes, and it's the same one that happens when Iki transforms. It's the heartbeat play out. And of course, in this episode, it looks like George has been busy studying Gifu and likely using his information to make some new vice stamps as we see a glimmer of new vice stamps at the end of this episode. However, George's suspicions just keep on mounting as there's various moments in which you can't really tell which side he's really on. Initially, it's when Hiromi first fails to transform. Next, it's when hearing Gifu's heartbeat. Lastly, yet again, it's watching Hiromi struggle out of his room. His interests will likely be made known eventually, but I'm really thinking that he's going to be the ultimate villain here. The main plot point for this episode revolves around Chameleon and Ortega's plan to infiltrate the Igarashi family. They do this by invoking the same plan that they had in Phoenix, just impersonating one of the family members. 
in this case, their mom. This moment, I was like, this is pretty smart. And I really hope this lasts for a few. Oh, oh, he's, he's already found out. Oh, they, they put trackers on everybody. Okay, there goes that plot. Now this does lead to a great sibling henshin moment. As well as some good fighting action, live transforming into the rightful user of the Jackal Vi stamp as the form swap just looks better on him and evil than on Revice. And finally, we get an all out rider kick action that reveals us to Chameleon's face. And he's that meme of that Japanese guy making that one face. That one. So I'm editing this video right now and yeah the reaction image guy i looked him up ayumi kato it's it's the same guy <laughs> it's the same guy also i'm wet thanks water model turns out chameleon is no one he's defeated so quickly and the dynamic that many of you believed what happened between him and Hiromi doesn't get to happen now. Look, Chameleon had so much potential, but they get rid of him just like that. The character development that we really got in this episode revolves more about the Iganashi mom than anyone else. Of course, Hiromi does get some good moments here, but the episode ultimately revolves around the mom accepting that her children will have to continue being protectors of the world as common writers. After all is said and done when it comes to this episode, we really have three major revelations. First, Hiromi got an upgrade and is rocking a nice new fit with his promotion to commander. Second, the dad of the family has no heart? <laughs> what is this plot? Third is that the Ushijimas invite Sakura over to their base of operation aka their house with nothing in it. And she finds a pathway leading to a basement that has a green glow to it, because of course that's not strange at all. And of course, Sakura is just gonna go right into it. Okay, look, guys, this episode's another C from me. Um, I don't know what's been going on with these last few episodes, but their pacing is just terrible. And I feel that this episode retroactively made the last episode somewhat worse because we didn't get the full payoff. Look, and part of the reason why the pacing doesn't work, and look, I already know some of the comments are going to go, the pacing has been fast since the beginning. Sure, that's true. But look, the majority of the pacing that we've had has normally just involved one character as the central focus point. So the pacing worked when it was just one character and we were fleshing out their story and getting that development. Now they are juggling pretty much the whole cast. Chameleon, as I mentioned before, had amazing potential as a plot point, especially for Hiromi, but now he's already gone. The great thing that we got in this episode is that it feels like maybe soon we'll get some sort of Hiromi plot. But now it won't deal with Chameleon and getting his revenge for the commander, as Iki already took him out. The mystery of who the Chameleon was, his face reveal, and all that was instantly brushed aside almost as soon as it was introduced. I was hoping for a little bit more mystery on who this guy was. No one. I was also hoping for at least a little bit more information on the Ushijima family, once they introduced that specific point at the end of the episode, I was like, okay, finally, we're gonna get something. But no, they're really playing the long game on this one. And now they're introducing the new plot point that their dad does not have a heart? Where the hell did that come from? Y'all are just throwing whatever at the writing board now. Like, was that even part of the plan or is it just a late script addition? As long as this doesn't play out as some introduced plot points that go nowhere, like 
specific shows. Calling you out red shoes. Kamen Rider Kabuto. If you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. It's a concept they introduced and then it went nowhere. They played it out like one episode. Oh, it's the Red Shoes Him Fuck that. Look, this better be a real plot point. The first arc of the show is officially over. And it started with a lot of weight and definitely helped develop the siblings of the Igarashi family. While Gifu's return was teased and just left there, this next arc is building on the seeds that were previously established while adding more to the mix. But how they play out remains to be seen. So what did you all think about this episode? I'm just... Am I just wrong for not liking how this arc is, like starting off it's already throwing away characters with such potential like seriously now in conjunction with the last episode in this episode how do you feel this arc got wrapped up and what are your hopes for what the next arc will bring with that said it's the last episode of the year so i will catch you all in 2022 with some more common writer revise and hopefully some more content when it comes to Tokyo in general. This is Zio Agito. Take it easy.